Welcome. I'm Meredith. This is the Oasis Spiritual Empowerment Tarot, all about tarot, oracle, and empowering you. And uh, today, this video is for Gloria Sham. <clears throat> um, it's it's probably been about a month or so, but um, they wanted me to review the visionary. Each in cards, um, and and actually they, they brought this deck to my attention, and it is by Paul O'Brien, art by Joan Laramore. Now, <laughs> this is my second time filming this because the first time, I forgot to plug in the mic, so it has been opened, um, but I haven't I haven't really done anything other than film this once before. Um, okay. So, let's take a quick look at the guidebook, which is pretty chunky. Um, gives you an introduction, talks about the deck specifically, then it talks about I Ching, benefits of using it, doing a reading, how to frame your subject of inquiry, how to pick cards, to determine your hexagram, how to interpret the text, and then it gets right into the cards. We do have an appendix, which gives us the trigam, uh, trigram polarity wheel, a table of trigrams and hexagrams, and then about the creators. So, um, it does give... Um, does give a nice kind of basic explanation um, about the trigrams. I kind of wish um, they were shown, but they're not. I, I mean, it's okay. I, you know, it's not, you know, it is what it is, right? It, it's, it's meant to be a book for the deck. Um, and then it gets into the cards and it gives us like a good paragraph about the card itself. It gives the, um, like the, the positions, um, it gives you like a, basically like a keyword and then it, it gives, um, messages or, or divinatory meanings for each of the lines. So roughly speaking, um, the way the way the author is having you do it is basically pulling two cards. I don't think he talks about more than that, actually. Um, but I could be wrong because I did just kind of unbox it, so I haven't like read it. Um, so based on those two, um, you're, you're looking at, you have the present and then the future and you look to see what's different, right? What's changed. So for your present card, whatever lines are changed, that's what you'll read. And then for the future, you'll read that paragraph or a couple paragraphs, basically. Um, let's back the author and here we have looks like the Bagua. I don't know if that's, I don't know. Um, yeah. So I think it's important to say I am at, it would be a compliment to call me a novice at I Ching. Um, so yeah, bear that in mind that it is something <clears throat> that, um, is I guess on on my agenda to to learn more about this coming year. Um, and if you're not aware, Benable Wen has a book available for pre-order right now, all about it. And um, <coughs> I think that comes out in June, so I already pre-ordered it. Um, and I'm gonna link. Um, I'm gonna link. There's a. 
there's a YouTube channel um, it's called I think it's called Mist of I Ching and Yang is uh, is is the creator who he has fabulous fabulous informative videos about it highly recommend so I'll link those but anyway look let's get into the cards um, so we do have you know but it I will say it's small right the the symbols it's a lot easier to see in the book at least for me um, because I did notice just in the walkthrough it was kind of hard to tell which lines were broken and you know all of that so okay sorry I think my first video was better so I apologize but let's just go with it um, okay so first we have this creative power sky above sky below right so there are no broken lines um, so basically this is all yang right now we have all yin so and it's all broken lines um, and it's earth above earth below so you see so this is all it's basically pure sky energy pure earth energy basically and it's receptive power now if you don't know anything about I Ching and you're like I don't know that I want to get involved in that but this deck looks interesting I think you could absolutely use this as a standard oracle um, I just did I show you the backs I should do the backs um, I think these images it, it's not my normal aesthetic but I do think that they're very evocative and I think that they match up really well with with these these titles these keywords um, but I will show you before before the end I will show you kind of a, a comparison with the I Ching Book of Change compared to um, some of the meanings in here or at least one anyway now we have difficulty at the beginning we have water above, thunder below, youthful folly, patience, and mm, so sorry. Let's do let's do the size in case you're interested. These are kind of oracle sized. Um, I feel like they're tall oracle because they are a good bit taller than standard tarot, and definitely a good bit wider. Um, the cardstock. I like it it's fairly thick it's very laminated it's a little glossy I mean it's you know but it's not that bad but it's not sticky glossy um, they don't fan out super well but they're okay and this is the type of cardstock just based on my experience the more you use it the more they'll move for you so I like it I think it feels really nice but anyway Conflict. I mean, you can feel it, right? I really wish these were larger, though. That's the only thing um, in terms of the cards. Organized discipline. I think you can, you can probably read it. You probably don't need me to tell you. Um, and I like the borders. And certainly, I mean, you could trim them, but then you would lose all of this. So you probably don't want to do that. I don't mind the white borders on the back. I don't love them, but I don't mind them. But I love this. So now I have, I don't even know. I think I have maybe two other um, I Ching base decks. So it'll be interesting to kind of compare and contrast them. Um, but again, I am I am at you know the very beginning of um, learning I Ching. So um, there's that. So if if you want to if you want to uh, kind of see how I do in a few months uh, when I've have time to really. 
um, hopefully learn a lot and, and put it into practice and kind of see how that goes, you know, let me know. But I would say that for me to get a decent grasp of it, at least, you know, expect a few months, um, certainly not a mastery, you know, but I think... I think I'll have a good grasp in a few months. Look at that, repairing the damage. And it's interesting to me, like, it almost looks like stitches, the way the trees are. I don't know if it's meant to be, but that's what I see. So that's kind of interesting. So I, I absolutely think you could use this as an oracle, like, just, and just kind of disregard any I Ching stuff if you want um yeah but I really I really like the stack um something pleasing about it does that make sense um and, and definitely the aesthetic is not my normal. But that's kind of nice too. So I think that for me, I will be focusing on using this um, with the I Ching um, and kind of using it to, to study and, and learn. And that just feels right for me. Um, now, <laughs> I may absolutely pick it up one day and decide, hey, I'm going to use this as an oracle. And, uh, you know, I'm fine with that. That clinging like fire. Um, and now I did notice that, uh, you know, when I filmed this video before, um, these, these titles are kind of in the same vein as the, as the, the titles in the I Ching, um, but they're not exactly the same, and I'm not sure how I feel about that, um, you know, again, I, I don't think I'm really positioned knowledge-wise to really make a determination on that at this point. Um, but if you're looking for, for really strictly traditional, um, it's something to bear in mind. I love this. So I think for me, as I learn, um, I'm going to be using multiple resources. And, and that's kind of standard for me. I believe in kind of checking and cross-checking things. Um, and as always, taking what makes sense to me and ditching the other stuff. Uh, I do tend to be a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to things like this. I don't know why he's going nuts. He's been really scutchy all day today. But I really like this duck. I really do. There's just something about it. So, uh, Gloria, thank you so much for bringing this to my attention and for asking for this. Love this keeping still. So 
so and let me know what you think do you have um an I Ching base deck that you really enjoy or maybe some other uh medium you know if you have recommendations That's my cat growling, you hear? I don't I don't know what's going on with these creatures. But um there's no one else here. It's just me and the cat. The dog's downstairs. Oh, now he's upstairs. Oh well. Um Yeah. So if you have any recommendations, um definitely let me know in the comments. I you know, always looking for for new things. So, or if you have recommendations on, on books, I do have a few at this point. Like I said, I did pre-order Benabelle's. Um, but yeah, if, if there's one that you thought was really clear and, and wonderful or really deep and beautiful, um, let me know. Okay, so now... Let's give them a shuffle so you can see how they do with that. And then um, we'll, we'll draw two cards because that's basically what the guidebook instructs. And take a look at how you might read them if you, you know, if you go along with the way the guidebook says. Um, and I know the creator has... Um, well, the Paul O'Brien has one or more videos um, about the deck and, and how to work with it. And I took a look at at one, um, but now that I actually have the deck, I'm gonna have to go back and look again. So. So, I mean, it, it shuffles well. It shuffles well. Um, yeah, it feels like it's very durable cardstock. Now, they are pretty long. You know, they're pretty tall. So, I have big hands, and it's a bit of a stretch. But I can do it. But um, if you have shorter... Ooh, if you have shorter hands for overhand, you probably want to do this. Okay, well, I feel like... This guy's coming out, so we'll use that for that first card. Now, the first card is for the present, and then the second card is the future. So, let's take you. All right. Now, this isn't a real reading. This is just kind of how you might read with the deck. So, we have nourishment. Now, um, again, for me... It's kind of hard to see because you want to look at what's different. Now, obviously the top, the bottom, but like what line is that? I think it's the third line. It, it's a little hard. But the nice thing is it's not at all hard in the book. So, um, so like first we'll go here for 16 enthusiasm. And we do have that thunder above earth below. And it shows very clearly and then we want nourishment. Okay. Uh, mountain above, thunder below. That's interesting. All right. Um, so here we have the lines. So now you want to see what's what's changed. So basically we have, oh, but they're, so they're counted from the bottom. So this is line one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah, there you go, at the bottom. Um, so the first line, two, three, four, and six, right? One, one, four, six. So those are the ones that we read for the present, which is uh, the enthusiasm card, right? So um, that's how whatever card is in this position, that's where you read 
the change number, the change lines. So for this one, um, starting with that bottom, we have self-consciously flaunting enthusiasm invites misfortune. Those around you need to ignite their own flames. Turning up the jets on your burners will not help if those around you are out of fuel. If others cannot keep up, you may need to slow the pace. If your associators, wait, if your associates have fuel but no fire, your selfless focus on the work at hand can be the flint that ignites their enthusiasm. A sense of unity can result. Then we have four. Great works spring up from those who can awaken enthusiasm in others through their own self-confidence and decisiveness. A person who is sincere and without doubts attracts others naturally. The power of such a person grows by sharing power and responsibility with others. As a result, others are willing to cooperate, become trustworthy allies and supporters. And then for line six, even if enthusiasm is slightly misguided at the time, it's not a big problem. Everyone suffers delusions from time to time. The bigger problem would be an, in, an, in, oh, an inability to dream at all. The sober realization that a false dream has run its course can be a sign of a fresh beginning. For those who are enthusiastic all the time, it's essential to be able to separate the dreamer from the dream. Then, what you do, according, you know, according to this book, is you look at that second card, that future position. Instead of reading the lines, you just read that beginning paragraph. Right? So we have nourishment. Nourishment refers to more than just a healthy diet of food. This hexagram represents caregiving as well. Eating properly implies care for oneself. Providing healthy meals in the home implies caring for the family. The writer of a great book and the composer of an inspiring piece of music also provide nourishment to humanity in general by caring deeply and offering the fruits of their works to the world. You can know people by observing what they nourish in their own lives. Do they feed and take care of their bodies? Do they cultivate their spirits, their intellects, their moral values? Do they nourish and care for those around them? If so, to whom do they devote their energies? The most successful people are temperate in eating and drinking, thinking and dreaming. They strengthen the world by nurturing their highest self and then sharing it with others. Pay heed to your thoughts and impulses, ignoring those who undermine a healthy and persevering attitude. A wise person is temperate in the consumption of food and drink because they because being otherwise only leads to discomfort and disease. The fact that temporary pleasure may precede discomfort does not influence a person of mature character. In the same way, a wise person is discriminating in word and action, lest the desire for temporary advantage lead to pain for oneself or others. Enrich your character and you will nourish everyone around you in the best possible way. Um, okay, so just briefly, um, let's take a look. Let's take a look at 16. Okay, so in this, it's enthusiasm, right? Now here in the I Ching, happiness it kind of makes an H which is kind of neat um, 
And again, we have that overall judgment. And then we have the components, which, which are the lines. Um, and it does break it down into uh, yin and yang. So basically, the unbroken line, that, that straight line across, is yang, right? Which is, um, that's like the warmth. That's like, if you, if you think about the sun, right? That would be like a yang, whereas the moon would be yin. But, you know, it's a whole big thing. And, and, and they both have bits of each other, which is why you'll see, well, it doesn't show it there. Usually there's a little dot to show um, the, the yin within the yang and the yang within the yin. Which I think is really beautiful. But anyway. Um, so it it kind of talks it there. So so if you see yin, you know that's that broken line. Right? That's that's a broken line. So it's yin, yin, yang, yin, yin, yin. Um, so if we look at that first line, it is unlucky to sound off about happiness. Weak at first, if you sound off about happiness, you will be unlucky, unlucky when your will is thwarted. So this is a very different take um, compared to that enthusiasm, right? And for that... I mean, it's in the same vein, right? So this one is self-consciously flaunting enthusiasm invites misfortune. Um, yeah, so they're they're similar, but I, I do feel like there are distinctive differences. Um, I. You know, obviously you can do it however you choose. Um, and in fact, if you have this deck, I'd really love to know how you use it. Do you use it strictly with this book? And certainly you can. Um, I think for me, I mean, if you're interested, let me lay these out as I talk. So, that, um, I think for me, I definitely... Definitely want to use these, um, you know, as as an I Ching rather than just a an oracle. But you could pull out those keywords. Again, I might every so often choose to use that as an oracle, but probably not. Um, I'm going to use this for study, and for me, I think I'm going to kind of compare and contrast the various books and, and the meanings because I think that's just going to give me a broader perspective just like with tarot right you want to get um, yeah I mean you could you could just read one book right and say okay this is what this means and that's great but by reading multiple books you get a broader perspective and it just helps you to see things more clearly I think um and that's kind of how I'm going to be moving forward with this. Um, kind of taking that same attitude. Um, you know, and it's certainly important to remember this book was written. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. It's, it, I think it's like, is it the, it might be the old, it's a very old book. Let's put it that way. So, there are nuances that um, potentially aren't expressed as well in it now that, you know, without the right context, I might not pick up on, you know, different things. So there's a lot of reason to look to other sources as well as using that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so that's my plan really I really I just there's something so pleasing about these cards 
I just, I love the way they feel. It's very, very wonderful tactile experience. Um, and I love these borders. I just feel like, I don't know. I think they're fabulous. Art style is not my favorite, but I don't, I don't mind it. But this is not a deck that for me, I buy because I'm like, oh, that's so pretty. But I think it works really well with the cards and, and, and with the overarching meanings. Um, I just wish the hexagrams were larger. Now, I don't know how they would have done that aside from like superimposing or something, but um, or just made the cards even bigger. <laughs> but like I said, they are in the book and they're very, very readable there so that's fabulous um yeah but i mean i to me like if you just looked at this right and you were doing a reading you, you get innocence attention to detail after completion i think you could take that just as um just as it is if you wanted to or you know kind of go into the imagery because even though it's not my favorite um, I do think it's very evocative and I do think that it presents the, um, the message well. Um, you're just not going to get, you know, if that's all you do, you're not going to get the, the deeper eaching meanings, if that makes sense. Um, although you could kind of. You really can't. <laughs> Never mind. But anyway, let me know what you think. Um, is this a deck that calls to you? Let me know. If, you know, if you have other decks in this um, genre that you enjoy, that that you think would be uh, worth checking out, um, or if you have any books that you're like, oh, you know what, this is a great book to, to use for study or any other resources, let me know. Definitely, definitely check out um, Yang's channel, Mist of I Ching. I will link it below. It's really, um, he does such a fabulous job of kind of breaking things down and, and describing them. And I certainly haven't seen all of his videos but I've seen quite a few and I really really enjoy them um, so yeah remember to like share and subscribe and let me know if there's anything you want to see if you're interested in checking in on, on my journey uh, with the Ching, you know maybe in a couple months um, let me know I'm happy to maybe kind of review this deck after I've gotten a, a better grasp of things uh maybe comparing it to other eaching decks that i have um yeah so let me know happy to uh to do what i can for you so until next time just be wonderful to yourself be really really wonderful because you deserve the best only the best all the best, and that is my wish for you.